Hey folks, uh, this is Perky and Sammy here um, in the background. Um, today we're going to have a bit of a play around with the rotisserie. I bought this rotisserie um, really for my 50th, um, which is like 18 months ago now, but the last 18 months for us has been very much a blur. Um, we didn't get around to using it, and so in fact we haven't we haven't touched it. It's uh, as new as the day we bought it. So today um, we're just going to trial a, a simple large or extra large um, fresh chicken on there because um, we didn't want to try a big expensive piece of meat until we've sort of mastered how to use the rotisserie properly. So we we're sort of just going to make up a bit of a, a, a recipe. Um, so we're just going to glaze the chicken, um, I think, with some lemon lime, some salt. Um, maybe a couple of other little things and going to make a little stuffing as well just with some nice seeded bread uh, maybe some um, some walnuts we haven't really decided what's going in there yet um, we've got a few little um, things we can throw in there we might cook off a little bit of apple to go with the walnut so apple and walnut and um, a couple of other things in there and then we'll just throw some um, some potatoes some carrot um, I think we said some corn on the cob um, that's Snowy making himself known in the background. Um, and yeah, so um, we'll film that today and um, pop it up for everyone to have a bit of a look. So, so one and a half cups of stale breadcrumbs. So yep. Just add one and a half yep. crust. I don't know chocolate. how stale this is, but it should be fine. It's a few days old, this bread, so it's not uh, not stale, but it's certainly not, uh, not super fresh. Um, So, just put it in the microwave, yeah, so just dry it up, cut it up nice and small. Or you can put it in the oven. Yeah. No. I suppose it's no point making it super crispy if it's going to get moist anyway and get with the milk or whatever moisture we put in there. But no, this is going to be good. As you're cutting that off, I might actually um, bash up some walnuts. Ooh. I don't know if we've got This is a whole nother world in here. And here we go. Found it. It's my day. Okay, so we've got that. Little plastic bags in here. Little sandwich bag would be perfect. Let's throw a handful of these in there. You can see we're not going to be super precise with everything. Because that's how Sam and I roll in life in general. <laughs> what about that, bub? Is that about enough? Yeah. Then, okay. Okay, give that a bit of a bash. Don't want to grind it to smithereens, but just. Oops. Some are escaping. I don't know how that happened. <coughs> That's probably about enough of a bash. You want some big bits and some smaller bits. A couple for me. Hmm. All right, so we'll put that aside. There's a bit of a hole in that bag, which I created. Hmm. I haven't used this head mount for the uh, the GoPro too much, so I'm hoping this footage turns out okay. The good thing with having it on my head is you don't get to look at my ugly mug. <laughs> I'm focused on other things. What do you We say some some apple. Celery, don't worry about celery. Apple instead of celery, I reckon. Oh, small white onion. I'll just get a little shallot maybe mm. out of here. Because you've got these dried ones too, if you want. Yeah. Whatever you reckon is better. Maybe the proper onion, maybe. Mm. Or we can use some of the shallots out of the garden. That might be nice. Yeah. Mm. So that's some citrus. Grab some parsley maybe as well. Yep. Okay, here we go. So at this stage, we've got the uh, the breadcrumbs, the, um, the cut up apple, um, some spring onion, yeah. um, the crushed walnuts are just going in. Sam's beaten an egg here. Um, got some garlic salt. 
Um, any other moisture going to this? Butter. Yep, butter. And then we'll just any have milk a look or anything? Consistency. We'll have a look at it. Yep. You can add milk to it if it appears to be too yep. soft, but I think with that apple, yep. that will keep it. Yeah, nice. yeah. Salt yep. That's looking really good. <coughs> mm. Beautiful. I love stuffing. Wow. Stuffing can really make a chicken, I think. It elevates it, doesn't it? It takes it from just a normal chook that you buy off the shelf at the supermarket to um, something that you might order in a restaurant. really nice and obviously that flavour will sort of infiltrate the, um, the chicken meat whilst basting on the rotisserie. Sam's going to create a base as well. I think we decided on lemon and lime and a few other things and we'll base that continually throughout the course of it cooking on the rotisserie. Now you can just leave it in the fridge yeah. to be ready to use it yeah. and that'll sort of yeah. bind and those basting, those sort of basting flavours of the citrus will complement the flavours in here yeah. as well. So. And you can add anything else to that. I mean, mm. the stuffing you can put. I think as long as you've got your breadcrumbs and you know, whether you're using egg, you mm. know, any other moisture, just getting those right. And then you can put in pretty much anything. Yep. Dried apricots or whatever you've got, whatever you've got on hand, really. Yep. Okay, so. Um, in order to get the uh, the coals right for the rotisserie, we've got this little, what they call a coal chimney. So you can actually put in some lump charcoal or various types of charcoal, um, pop some fire igniters underneath, and uh, within 20, 25 minutes, we'll have some nice white coal. So you can see under here, that's where the fire igniters go. I'm gonna pop some coal in here. Just fill that right up. and find some smaller bits if anything but I might have to do a few of these just to make sure we've got enough coal for the um, the actual uh, rotisserie itself Sam's going to pop down the shop and get some twine we need for the chicken. I don't know what that is. Okay. Lots of traffic out on the road today. In the front yard here. Yeah, well that's kind of doomy for now. I'm not going to light it just yet. Okay, so the first thing is we've popped the, the, uh, the lump coal in there. We'll get a couple of little fire starters out from here. Uh, two to three should be suffice. I'll use three. Pop that up there. As I said, I'm not too sure how, how this recording on the, the head torch will... A head torch? Head, um head mount will go um, hopefully okay okay so let's light these little suckers okay so we've got them well lit this guy sits on top and yeah, we'll leave that for 20 minutes or so and um, come back to some white hot coals. Okay, there we go. So that's on perfectly. Um, it's secured right through. Um, obviously all the four prongs are, are right through and tighten the bolts on, on both the ends there. So just waiting for the coals, which will be in another few minutes. Um, and then we can pop that straight on. Okay, so you can see there, that's a, a nice little flame under there. It's smoking away nicely. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's looking good. Um, you can buy a whole host of different types of coal um, which come with the different characteristics. So you've got sort of ones 
uh, with sort of maple wood or things like that too and they'll give quite a different flavour to any meat that you're cooking as well. Um, this is just traditional standard lump coal which is all I could get my hands on but um, yeah we'll trial some different ones down the track for sure. I just asked Sam if we had any lemons and she directed me to this thing which apparently is a lemon. I've got quite big hands so you can see how big that is it's almost the size of a rock melon. It's from mum's lemon tree. It is it's from the lemon tree and produces these massive bloody lemons. So we've got that, a couple of limes, a bit of salt, um, yeah and uh, a couple of other things maybe some paprika or something like that we'll see we're just, just going to um, suck and see and see what works out best. So Sam's just poured a third of a cup of soy into there as well and we have approximately the same of honey which I'll just estimate. And it should do maybe half a teaspoon approximately of paprika that'd be just a bit of a guess as well that'll be enough a little bit of a stir up And a bit of salt, I think, is the only thing we... Taste. Yep. Teaspoon of sesame oil in there as well. And definitely a bit of salt. You pass, sorry, sweet, the uh, salt, which is near the kettle, I think. Thank you. Okay, so we've just decided we needed a little bit more sweetness in there, so we had a bit of a taste. So we put some um, dark corn syrup, which is a very sort of, almost a, not burnt, but a, you know that nice burnt caramelised type flavour, it's similar to that. Um, which adds a real depth of flavour to it, which is nice. So, yeah, looks like some sort of unusual ingredients we've mixed in there, but um, we've partially gone off a recipe but added a couple of things on our own there. But just taste it as you go and, and do things to, to your liking. There's no right or wrong way of going about it. It tastes pretty good to me. So I'm not going to base that till I get that out onto the um, rotisserie, which we'll just go and check the coals now and see how they're going. Um, just about ready to pour in, and then we can get the rotisserie sitting over the top of that, and off we go. Happy days. Okay, folks, so here we go. Chook's on there. I'm actually doing some more coals, just in case. Um, as you can see, I've set this up a little bit higher you can actually set this down lower there, obviously it will cook quicker. Um, I've set it up here, not right at the top. But we want to cook it a little bit slower, so hopefully it'll be closer to the two hour mark. Um, and we'll commence basting on that shortly. Okay. Taking the, the little head um, mount off. Um, as I said, I don't know how any of that's recorded, you might not have seen anything. Hopefully we've got a little bit of footage there. Um, but yeah, this is only after about five minutes or so. It took so long to get the balance right uh, of the weight of the chicken because it simply wouldn't spin um, until I did achieve the correct uh, counterbalance on it. So that took me quite a bit of time, more time than I had liked to get that right. Um, as I said, I'm going to top up the coals here and commence a bit, a little bit of basting um, with that base that we made before. Um, and yeah, I've just got a little bit more in the way of coals. Um, happening here so that shouldn't be too far away um, once that's broken down in the next 15 minutes or so I'll add that to the other ones and then pop that little metal grids over the top and we won't need to pop the veggies on maybe another hour or so, so we'll get a little bit of basting happening here I'm gonna have to be a little patient with this because it's spinning quicker than I can get the baste on but that's okay Smells good. Oh, smoked out. Not for the 
the faint heart of this rotisserie business. Can't wait till we move down to Margaret River so we don't have to deal with this traffic that we do here. A nice little peaceful oasis of our own. Where I can rotisserie naked out the backyard with the birds. You didn't need to know that. All right, that'll do for now. We'll whack some more on a little later. Okay, so here we go. So we've just got um, little baby spuds cut in half, a bit of broccolini, just with a little bit of salt, pepper and butter. Um, some sweet corn, some baby carrots, some little garlic and butter and salt and go into that pan, which will sit nicely on the rotisserie sort of between the chicken itself and the coals. So just prepping all this, I'm just gonna go and check on the coals now too to see if they're ready. So I can top up the coals and do a bit more basting. Look on here, one thing they don't talk about in the instruction manual is how high this should be. And it's always hard to regulate heat on an open flame or on coals. Obviously we've got a thermometer which we can pop into the meat to check as well. But generally I'll just go by look and see and pry it open with a bit of a knife at some stage. And, and, and that's obviously the best gauge in my mind to check whether it's cooked or not. Still probably another half hour or so, I think, before we pop the veggies on. Still a bit browning up a little bit. Might do a little bit of basting still. A bit of that on. Beautiful, it smells so good. Beautiful, happy days. That string is all coming off. And not due to the knots of the way I've tied it, it's just burnt through. Um, this was advised to be rotisserie. It's suitable for rotisseries. Bloody hot. One thing I do know. Mm -hmm. Here we are, Sammy and I are just sitting down with a well deserved drink. I'm having a little port, excuse the grubby fingers, and handling coal and things like that. That was one of my little Father's Day ports. Sitting here next to the rotisserie, look at it, golden brown it is. It's glorious and the smell wafting off it is just delightful. So, yeah, nice little spot to sit out and watch that cook away. So, just pop the, uh, the spuds on with a bit of butter and garlic and the, uh, the corn as well, the corn on the cob. So we'll let those cook maybe all together for 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes possibly, and then pop on the baby carrots and the greens. And then hopefully, once we take the chicken off for a little while, um, everything should be finished about the same time. Okay, here we go. So we got the chook going, uh, potatoes are looking fantastic. Corn's just about done. Just whack the carrots on and roll them around in the garlic and butter. Um, and then just up the top here, we've got the broccolini, which we'll throw on shortly, um, but coming together beautifully. Bloody marvellous. Huh? And there we go. That's the um, the end result. Sorry, a macadamia and apple um, stuffed chicken basted with citrus, some corn, some potatoes, some broccolini, and some carrots. Time to dig in.